Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is XCOM Enemy Within. Well, this is the expansion pack, the forthcoming expansion pack for XCOM Enemy Unknown by Firaxis. It's coming in for $30, your regional equivalent. And it is a full-blown expansion. It's not just a little piece of DLC. They did DLC before. It went by the name of Slingshot, and it was not very good. It was basically a three-mission pack with a tech skip. Basically, you were buying power in that one. You got a bunch of rewards at the end of the three-mission mini-campaign, and it gave you access to a very, very powerful piece of technology much, much earlier on in the game. Now, of course, this is all integrated into XCOM Enemy Within as well, but there are a lot of changes this time around, so I'd like to show you as many of them as possible. I do have a few limitations on the embargo. Basically, I will be able to show you one complete mission and then probably a bit of a second one, and I will not be able to show you a couple of the really plot important ones, but that's not really all that vital because I haven't actually got to them yet. As you might imagine, it being an XCOM game, it takes a long time to get to where you need to go. And as a direct result, this first impressions will show you as much as I've managed to get through in one. I think it's about 15, maybe 20 hours in, possibly. I, I played a lot, what can I say? But you know, it's a first impression series. It is what it is. Take it as you will. So we'll have a quick look at the options. There's a couple of changes this time around. You can actually pick soldier's language, which allows you to have new soldiers spoken language matched to their nationality based on the kind of languages which are available in the game. You've got more customization options for your soldiers this time around, which do allow you to change the language that they use, which is pretty cool. I think changing any of them to Russian is a very good idea because they're all pretty awesome. Aside from that, it's mostly the same. The video options menu is right here, and then you've got your graphics options, which are pretty much the same as they were otherwise. Now, before we go into the game, I'll show you a couple of additional options for startup. So as you can tell, I don't have all the second wave stuff here because you've got to beat the game in order to get that to happen. You've got your same difficulties this time around. The footage I'm going to show you is from Classic. Obviously, Impossible is extremely difficult. I generally play, play on Classic, which is fairly tricky. And then Advanced Options. You've got a couple of things you can turn off now. Operation Progeny is a new set of levels which appear to be available in XCOM Enemy Within. I think I've run into at least one of them so far. And then Operation Slingshot is the DLC. Then you've got your Iron Man as always, and you've got Reduce Beginner VO, which is very nice, because obviously if you've played a bunch of XCOM, you do not need Dr. Varlin saying, you know, I realize we have to something something, our oh, troops safety first, but explosives, explosives, and shut the balls up. Uh, it's rather irritating. And then you can turn the Mel tutorial on and off. You really don't need this on, frankly. You really don't, but I think it gives you an additional starting mission, and it gets you a bit extra meld as well. So, yeah, it's it's not really all that vital, and meld is not a complex idea, but I will explain how the actual system works when we go in. All right, let's load up a game, shall we? And let's get on in, show you what's going on. So, we will be going into a covert option, ops mission fairly shortly, I believe. It's covert operation coming in three days, so we'll be dealing with that. But in the meantime, let's look at the changes. So the two big changes with this expansion are the addition of a new class, as well as the addition of so-called gene mods, which can be given to regular troops. There's a bunch of other stuff, but we'll talk about that in a second after we've gone through that. So the first thing you can do is, and you can get this fairly early on once you've got a cybernetics lab, is to build and upgrade MECs, mech troops, yep. And they look something like this. I currently have three mech troops because, frankly, they're pretty good. So I got three of them, and as you can see, these guys have been around for a while. I've got two majors and a captain right here, and they're both equipped with different stuff. This is the Mech Mach 1 here, and you'll be able to get more upgrades as you go through. So when you build a mech, it costs you meld, and it costs you money as well. And if one of your mechs is destroyed, you can get the suit back, but I believe you have to pay additional meld and things like that. And of course, the trooper inside is dead. Now, if you want to get one of these, you have to augment a soldier, and this is how you do it. Once you augment a soldier, it becomes a mech trooper, so you can't get him back. It is irreversible. So let's just say I wanted to upgrade Sam Rodriguez Nova. He's, he's pretty highly ranked, as you can see. What if I want to turn him to a mech trooper? I can do that. And what it's going to do is it's going to level that mech trooper up back to the major rank. So he's going to unlock those abilities pretty much immediately. So it's a rather strange idea because 
in the previous game, there was no way to really do that. You had to start from scratch and build up your soldier. You couldn't switch classes like that. Here, you can switch into a mech, but you can't switch back out of a mech. And a mech trooper is useless without a mech suit. So if you don't have them, you don't have enough mech suits for your mech troopers, you simply cannot deploy them. So you augment the soldier, and depending on which class it started with, it also gives you a bonus ability. In the case of the heavy, you get a body shield, minus 20 aim for the nearest visible enemy and cannot be critically hit. The others that are available, I, I can't show you assault, unfortunately. Actually, I can show you assault because I converted one earlier. The If you convert the sniper, you get platform stability, plus 10 aim and plus 10% critical chance if you take shots without moving. And then if you take support, which in my opinion is the best, Distortion field. Nearby allies in cover receive a plus 10 defense, and it's a big aura as well. It's a good few squares. Now, the only other one is, I believe, some kind of close range armor. I'll have a quick look at it because I'm fairly sure one of my mech troopers actually had that. Neil Berry used to be an assault trooper. It was like my only assault. I haven't got any since, which is really strange. But the ability that he gets is shock absorbent armor. So, damage received from enemies within four tiles is reduced by 33%. Now, these bonus abilities are fairly important because they define the role of your mech to some degree. And let's have a look at the actual abilities that are available for the mech classes. I can't show you the final one because I haven't got there yet, but I can show you everything up to that point. So, your basic ability is dependent on which class you used to be, so that's your squaddy ability. You've then got a choice between advanced fire control and automated threat, threat assessment. So... You can see right there, that would be really, really good if you wanted to shoot stuff in Overwatch. This is great if you're wanting to kind of stand at the front in Overwatch. It's a very tanky ability. You then got vital point targeting. Once you've autopsied a target, you get plus two bonus damage against it. That is actually one of several buffs to autopsies that are in this particular version of the game. And then you've got damage control here which is extremely useful because it reduces future damage coming in. This is really, really good against swarms of smaller enemies. And then you've got One for All, which is something that allows you to turn your mech into high cover. Or alternatively, the Jet Boot module, which allows your mech to not so much fly, but it acts like a skeleton suit, only a lot better. So it lets you get up to high places, which is actually quite overpowered in my opinion. And then you've got Repair Servos, which is like the best thing ever. It confers health recovery, so you regenerate health during the fight, which is incredibly useful. And then expanded storage allows additional uses of this stuff. The problem with expanded storage is that you need to unlock all of that stuff, and I actually haven't done it yet. I'm not sure what I need to unlock it. There's a lot of additional research options now, so it's a little bit trickier. Overdrive, firing the mech's primary weapon as the first action no longer ends the turn. Yep, pretty much. It's, it's a bullet storm for them. It's, it's insane. Now, aside from that, the customization is very much limited to which you, which base weapon you take. And as far as I can tell, it's just straight upgrades. So the minigun is your default. Not a particularly good weapon, honestly. It's 4 to 6 base damage and 8 to 10 crit. It's basically an assault rifle. And then the railgun is like a laser rifle for the most part. So the actual guns on these things are not that powerful. But what is is the ability that it comes with, which, if I can find it here, I think I've got to go to the mech suit here, is the flamethrower. You can actually see it there. It is a very, very dangerous weapon. The other one that you can get, at least by default, is the kinetic strike, which is a, basically a power fist, and you do 12 damage with it, and it also destroys cover and has a massive knockback. It kills anything, really, with the exception of stuff like a berserker, or a cyber disc, or a... Mectoid. So it does a huge amount of damage. It's very good for killing chrysalids because it one-shots them. So that's what that's what the trooper looks like if he doesn't have a mech suit. And it's completely useless. You can't deploy that at all. So, yep, you lose the arms, legs. You basically lose everything. It's kind of a brutal thing indeed. So that's the mech trooper in a nutshell. And I'll be able to show you that in action shortly. In the meantime, let's have a look at the gene lab. So the gene lab is the other thing, and that allows you to gene augment soldiers. This takes a little bit of time, but you can do it to anyone that's not a mech trooper and is at least squaddy rank. So let's say I wanted to upgrade Mary Douglas the support here. I don't have a lot of gene mods unlocked yet. I believe you've got to do interrogations and autopsies to get most of them. So again, there are there is an awful lot of reason to do that, and there's actually a really good reason for playing South America now. 
and actually getting the South American bonus because you will be able to do those autopsies and interrogations instantly, which means you get access to a lot of those gene mods and upgrades. So the, the three that I've got right now are hyperreactive pupils or depth perception. As you can see there, they both take meld and money. And then adaptive bone marrow in the legs, which is a very powerful one, takes a lot more meld. It's really, really good. It reduces the wound recovery time, which stacks with rapid recovery, which is insanely good. And then it regenerates 2 HP per turn to the HP max without armor. That's absurdly good. And I assume the other, I think the other legs one is a jumping ability. So that'll allow you to jump without a skeleton suit, which is pretty good. So gene mods are really, really powerful, and in general, there's no reason not to give your guys gene mods if you can afford them, but it does take them out of action for a couple of days. You've got to be careful about that. I've had, I think it's three days per gene mod, so I've had a lot of my best guys undergoing gene therapy, and then suddenly we end up with an invasion, and I have to fight it with like three squaddies, which is really not a good thing. So you've got to be a little bit careful there. Aside from that, research projects, you, you basically have a few extra ones. I had a mechtoid one, which I did, and then I've got a Seeker autopsy here. The Seeker is the second new enemy, which you've probably seen. We might run into one. And aside from that, the research is for the most part the same, but you unlock a lot more stuff. So with the heavy laser, I was able to unlock a railgun for my mech troopers. With one of the autopsies, you get a bunch of different foundry upgrades and things like that. So let's go and have a quick look at the foundry. So with the foundry, you've got a lot more stuff this time around, huge amounts. Tactical rigging is something I grabbed. This is really powerful. It gives you a second inventory slot to every single trooper you have. That means, by the way, that grenades way more powerful this time around because you can easily carry them instead of something else. Scopes, much, much more powerful, especially with the upgrade. You've got a lot more options. In fact, you might even want to consider something like the uh, nanofiber vest early on in the game because it gives you that additional plus two HP and you don't have to lose your grenades or something like that. Very, very powerful upgrade and they changed deep pockets so that it actually gave a boost to grenades and I think it lets you carry even more there so that's pretty good. You'll notice here these two actually came from an autopsy. Very expensive as you can see but they are big upgrades to cyber suits and shivs so shaped armor there and advanced servo motors. Co very, very costly. The foundry, it seems, is a lot more useful in this version of the game. It's got a lot more going for it. Now, I'd love to say that there were more officer training things, but there aren't, as far as I can tell. Everything seems to be the same as always. I don't think there's anything extra here, and there's been no changes to the way the officer training system actually works, so do bear that in mind. I would say that new guy is even more important now because it lets you gene mod and mech trooper very, very quickly. So if you need to create new mech troopers, this is a quick way of doing it. And by default, mech troopers are not bad, yeah? They're pretty strong. I'd say that they are the strongest of the classes at the squaddy level before upgrades. So it's hard to argue with that. Now, this is something that wasn't really mentioned too much. That's the idea of medals. This is something a little bit new. There are five medals in the game, and you can rename them as you see. <laughs> they actually hit something medal and so on and so forth. Now, you can grab one of two different minor passive buffs with these medals, and then you can award them as you get them to pretty much whoever you please. So, in this case, my sniping medal, which I'm called it, I, I can't remember what it was actually called, it was like the International Star or something, but it's plus 10 aim and critical chance if not within seven tiles of an allied unit. So, this is something that's very useful for lone wolf snipers, and as a result, I give it to pretty much all of my snipers whenever possible. I don't think I've given it to Black Widow, though, so there we go. As you can see, a, a wonderful little medal that's been put on her. So it's a nice little feature. Yeah, it lets you give a couple of additional passive buffs, and you are awarded more medals the better you do. So it's a nice little boost. In the case of this one, this allows you to heal up quicker. And I can't remember what this one was actually for. Yes, plus two will put different nationality in the squad. They're, they're little things, just little things, but it definitely helps a lot. Aside from that, there's a couple of additional buildings. As you might imagine, the cybernetics lab and the genetics lab. These tack on to things, so the cyber lab actually tacks on with the foundry and the workshops for adjacency bonuses, and the genetics lab, as you might imagine, tacks on to other laboratories. There's nothing else that I can see that's actually different when it comes to building facilities. And I do not believe there's been I don't believe there's been any changes whatsoever to the way the interception works or anything like that. So uh, ships are the same as they always were. 
The only other thing to look at is covert operations. So we're about to do a covert op in three days. So you're going to be seeing how that actually works. But covert operations is what you need to unveil the presence of Exalt. Now, Exalt is a human, I wouldn't say rebel faction per se. They're more of a kind of shadowy corporate group that is looking to exploit alien technology and kind of help the alien invasion because they believe once the aliens leave, they will be able to dominate the planet, which is pretty dumb, but that's to be expected. And these guys will steal stuff from you, which is extremely annoying. They can randomly make research take longer, and they can also steal money from your actual accounts, which is incredibly irritating. I think I just got 200 stolen from me. In doing so, though, they unveil a cell. And as you can see here, there's a cell in the US and I sent a covert operative on site to look at it. To do covert ops, you pick one soldier and you send them in with a pistol. And after about three or four days, you send in an extraction team to finish the mission off. And you either get a kind of VIP escort style or you get one which is just defend the encoder until you've stolen all the information, and just slaughter all the exalt soldiers there. So in that case, you will be seeing human on human combat, which is kind of interesting. You can do an intel scan to reveal more exalt or exalt cells, but it does take a decent amount of cash and it increases every time you do it. So the idea is to eliminate every possible place where the exalt headquarters is and then attack. So it's really as simple as that. Now, I think I need to launch a satellite. Things are going fairly badly in both of these countries. Shouldn't be a problem. I've got a couple more satellites available, so I think we'll, we'll toss it over China. There we go. And then we'll be able to get two more satellites up before the council meeting, which is good. So I think that's everything from the base standpoint. I don't think there's anything else that you really need to worry about. If there is any kind of base invasion, it certainly doesn't tell you. And maybe it's, it's probably just a canned event, I think, later on in the game. Operative is ready. All right. Send an extraction squad. All right. So we're going to murder some exalt. And we really, really are. So this is the defense mission where you have to defend the encoder and the transmitter. Excellent. So... We are going to destroy them. I am taking my absolute best, and they are going to be absolutely obliterated. I'm going to take three of my best mech troopers, who are very, very good against Exalt. And I'll take... Th I might take three heavies. I, I might as well take my support as well. So I'll just throw away Lieutenant there. Actually, my support is on the mission, so that really doesn't matter. Maybe I take a sniper. I have a decent amount of good snipers, so... We could take Black Widow or Longbow. Which one? I'll take Black Widow. She's pretty bad, by the way. She keeps missing everything. It's like, she's supposed to be the best sniper I've got, and she consistently misses. It's really quite comical. Looks like I don't even have enough armor for them. Now, you might wonder what this is. This is the Exalt sniper rifle. It's just a slightly different skin, and you can sell these. Whenever you kill Exalt troopers, you gain their weapons. You can sell them for one credit each. It says something on the lines of, oh, other, other countries might be interested in them, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the case. Wow, I can't really take anything for her. I'm going to make available, actually. This button is fantastic, by the way. It was a real problem in XCOM originally to actually get all of the stuff back from the troops, but there we go. So I've made a carapace armor available, and I guess that'll do. And we can take a scope there as well, especially considering I upgraded those. So we're going to rock the house. Now, you might wonder, why are these guys all bare armed? These are gene modded troops. Any of the gene modded troops have bare arms. I have no idea why that is. It is a little crazy, but such is the way of things. Also, they appear to have added a fedora. I'm just saying, it is there. Customization for the mech troopers is a little bit more limited, but you can give them hats. So that's nice. And you can also pick their languages as well. So a little bit more customization for your troops. Of course, don't do that, because if you customize your troops, they'll die. All right, we're about ready to rock and roll, I think. Everybody has everything they need to absolutely destroy this mission, so let's hopefully not lose. That will be quite embarrassing after I've been talking about wrecking Exalt. So, we'll show you the Exalt mission, and then we'll show you a basic mission, and hopefully show you a mechtoid and maybe some Seekers as well. All right, so we're going to destroy this cell. It's pretty good because you get a decent amount of cash and you also get the weapons that you can sell there as well. And there's also a decent variety of these kind of missions available in terms of the maps. There's two mission types related to Exalt outside of the story stuff. And as you can probably see, they've managed to adapt a lot of the classic maps to work here. So there are a lot of different maps, including some new ones. In fact, I, what I would say about this is that there are so many new maps that it actually really feels like they've revitalized the game quite nicely. So I'll give them a lot of credit for that. All right, let's rock and roll. So honestly, against Exalt, 
I don't really need to worry too much, at least right now. Exalt can get new technology and become a little bit more dangerous, but honestly, I've done maybe three missions against Exalt so far, and they have not scratched me. My mech troopers absolutely destroy them, especially the ones with the flamethrowers, because they cause panic, so that really results in some really nasty results. Wow, what what was that? What sentence was that? God, I think I'm being attacked by sonic aliens here. I'm not making any sense. Yeah, panicking exalt is pretty bad. They can't really do much. Uh, and my mech troopers can take that kind of fire. They only have human weapons, so it's not like a thin man crits you for 12 here. It's like an assault rifle hits you for three. And mech troopers have like 15 health, some of them even more. So it's not really too much of a problem. And also my mech troopers can regenerate as well, so... Not really a big concern. The Exalt missions in general I found to be particularly easy, and I suppose that comes onto one of the first concerns that I have had with this game, which is that I have a feeling they haven't dealt with power creep as well as they thought they were going to. I actually asked them about this in the interview that I did at PAX, and I said, well, what have you done to deal with power creep? Mech troopers seem really powerful, gene mods are kind of base upgrades, things like that. And they said, oh yeah, you know, we, we've we've done a few things, we've slowed down research, which they have. You know, so, they, I mean, I've played a lot and I've only got the laser weapons and carapace armor so far, so I've actually been progressing fairly slowly. And they also talked about the mech trooper, where if the mech trooper dies, it's problematic because you then have to repair the mech suit, which costs a lot of meld and money. So, that seemed like it might help, but if I'm entirely frank, I've had these mech troopers since the start of the game and they have never died. <laughs> never there was I, I got close at one point I really did when I ran into a crowd of thin men and they were able to do massive damage to my mech trooper but honestly aside from that I have not taken a single casualty on the mech trooper front at all and honestly these guys are really really good at what they do they can't take cover but honestly a lot of the time they don't seem to need to they can just take the hits Especially if you have a guy with a distortion field and you've got some of the upgrades. These guys are super tough. Yes, they're easy to shoot, but with some of the uh, Overwatch upgrades, like the plus 15 defense or the really, really good upgrade, which allows you to shoot back with full accuracy. At that point, frankly, you have to say, look, these guys aren't dying anytime soon. Now, I have a feeling that eventually they will become less effective, but at the start of the game, in the first 15 hours, I found that mech troopers, along with snipers, are the best class in the game. And they're really difficult to take down. They have fantastic area of effect with the collateral damage ability, which destroys cover, and also the fact that they happen to be sitting on a flamethrower, and later on they get like a grenade launcher and proximity mines and things like that. The flamethrower is like six damage, plus panic, plus panic, plus a bunch of area of effect. Yeah, it's a wide cone. So it's a very, very powerful ability. And I think that might be a bit of a problem because mech troopers are cool, don't get me wrong, but they don't seem to have a lot of limitations. Not being able to go into cover is not a big enough limitation for these guys. It really, really isn't, because they're going to be able to take bullets like no one's business, and you can heal them with a medic. I have a feeling they might get nerfed. I really, really do, because they seem to be so, so very good in the first 20 or so hours of the game. And bear in mind, I'm playing on Classic. I'm not playing on Easy, and I'm certainly not playing on Normal. They may be a little bit less ridiculous on Impossible, but I think you're about to see kind of how ridiculous they are, because honestly... These guys are going to have a lot of difficulty touching me. I mean, two of them already just got murdered by Overwatch fire, so that's not even a problem. They're going to throw a lot of these guys at me, and the amount of damage they can do with the basic human weapons, that's obviously a bug, as you can see, they're getting out of helicopters, is limited. It's very, very limited. Also, since they don't really drop anything of massive value, you are entirely okay with just blowing them up with rockets and explosives. It does not matter. Oh no, I didn't get my one dollar value gun. Who cares? Nobody cares, and <laughs> rightfully so. There's no reason to be remotely concerned about that. So, I don't really know yet for Exalt. I have a feeling that you've just got to let them get more advanced before they really become a threat. But, what I will say is that I approve of Exalt actually being in the game. This is something that some people disagree with me on, saying, hey, you know, I don't like the fact that there are humans in this game now. It's like, okay, I kind of get that, 
but it's a nice change of pace. And humans also have the same kind of abilities that you do. So they can heal each other, they can use rockets, they can snipe, and all sorts of things like that. Alright. Time to barbecue a few of these fools. Here we go. So, flamethrower. This is what it does. It, it's pretty devastating. It burns down cover, it causes panic, which generally means that they have to run out of cover, and then you shoot them, which is pretty damn good, frankly. Pop goes the weasel. There we go. And it also can mean as well that they can't respond the next turn. Yeah, they... They're just not that good at what they do. And as a result, Exalt is kind of a joke, at least early on. I have a feeling that it won't remain that way. And aside from that, it's a little bit irritating. And yeah, I wanted to go for the guy with the higher health. That was a mistake. It's a little, they're a little bit irritating because they steal money and they screw with your research and things like that. But as actual threats on the battlefield, they are not dangerous in comparison to aliens at all. Yeah? Aliens obviously are absolutely lethal, as you might imagine. I mean, I'm just going to go right at them here. I have a 15 health mech who can probably horribly murder at least one of these guys. So we're going to start with him. Just gun him down mercilessly. There we go. So, in my opinion, I think they need to make the Exalt missions, these default Covert Ops missions, a little bit more difficult. Because they're not that tricky. The only thing they can really get you on is if they manage to swarm you. And there are usually a lot of aliens, but with the abundance of area of effect, particularly since you get tactical rigging, which means almost everyone can have a grenade, and the fact that there's like at least two more grenade types available in this game, you don't really have to worry so much about being swarmed. If you get swarmed, you just blow them up. Who cares? So that's a little bit problematic. And it is just a combination of the fact that there has been power creep. Uh, gene mods make you more powerful, medals make you more powerful, mech troopers are just generally pretty damn good at what they do. Is he grenading my mech trooper? This is hilarious. Oh no, three damage! <laughs> you see, they can't do anything to me. However, as I said, nice change of pace and some pretty cool ideas going on. And every now and again, you could be surprised because, hey, one of them gets out a sniper rifle, deals five damage to my mech. Not bad, not too bad. And maybe, just maybe, they do a little bit more damage to him. But he's probably going to regenerate. And healing shouldn't be too much of a problem. I mean, I have my medic on task. And he actually has four uses of his med kit. So, I'm not massively worried about him. I think we're just going to try and take him out with the sniper there. Not the best headshot. I say Black Widow is really anything but. But she'll, she'll get around to it, I'm sure. She'll finally have her moment of glory. I think we'll gun down him. There we go. Can do a little bit better than that. What kind of surprises me about the Exalt Troopers is that they are a little bit tougher than you might think. Which is interesting. Because, I mean, they are human enemies, but mostly they actually have better hit points than a lot of the aliens, especially at the start. You know, I mean, these guys have double what a thin man has, so they can take a little bit of punishment, which is required. I mean, if they were as weak as regular humans, it would absolutely suck. And these guys are supposed to be gene modded as well, so bear that in mind. Alright, I do have a laser pistol guy here who may be able to climb up and do some damage, I think. Yeah, I mean, laser pistol should be enough to take that guy out, so we're going to give that a try. Hopefully kill him, otherwise I've left my guy exposed without armor, which is not going to be too helpful. Kill him, please. Oh, come on! Alright, I guess we'll rely on something else then. Can we hit him from up here? Strangely enough, not. Alright. It's slightly annoying. wonder if we happen to have anyone else that can deal with it. He can't quite get up there. Can probably hit him from there. Give it a shot. Interface-wise, they haven't really done much to the game. It's pretty much the same thing as it was previously, so there shouldn't be anything that really surprises you. What I have noticed, by the way, in the first 15 to 20 hours of play, is impressively, I haven't run into any more than one bug. Only one. That happened during an Exalt Covert Ops mission, where what basically happened is it went to the Exalt turn, and it didn't do anything. It just stopped. I'm going to try and take the sniper out. He's more of a risk. There we go. Rail going to take him out nice and easy. And it wouldn't do anything, so I had to reload the game. Aside from that, though, no problems. It seems like they have tightened the game up significantly, which I'm very, very happy with. Especially considering that the previous game certainly had some problems. Hmm. Should I? 
Yeah, I've got I've got a couple more rockets. So, oh, that's what's that going to hit exactly? Oh, it's going to hit the encoder. Yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. Alright, I'll just reload the reload the gun. No problem at all. There's the auto repair going off. So I've had none of the strange height and geometry issues that I had previously, which is good. So that's nice to see. And in general, it seems like the game is a little bit more polished. There's still some animation problems like there was in the first game, whereby things would kind of awkwardly swivel and turn around, and then occasionally you get what I like to call the Vandal XCOM, where they just randomly break windows for no reason and then fire in a different direction. That still happens. I've seen less of the BS of shots going through three walls and hitting your troops and insta-critting them, so that's nice, but hey, I might have just got lucky there. Has this made it a better game? Well, it has. And funnily enough, it's not really the addition of the mech troopers that actually made it a better game. I like the fact that there's another class, don't get me wrong, but I don't like the fact that the mech trooper, at least in the early game, seems like it's a little bit more potent than it should be. And it really takes the role of almost all the other classes, aside from maybe the sniper. I haven't used an assault since I got my mech troopers. I didn't see the point. I mean, this guy can do exactly the same thing an assault can do in the sense of being a ridiculous bullet magnet. So you can just run him into Overwatch fire and he should be able to deal with that no problem whatsoever. I want to be careful about standing here because he actually has rockets. But again, I can take that kind of damage. It's going to do, what, six maximum? Not too worried. It's nice that they have added a new class, but I think maybe they're just too capable. So... I would hope for a few nerfs. Maybe they can't get through doors because they're too big. Or maybe they can't be healed by conventional means, so you can't heal them up with a medic. Maybe... What's the other suggestion? Get rid of the jet boots ability, for instance. You know, that kind of mobili mobility is kind of ridiculous. I mean, they have so much power as a result of having that mobility. Obviously, it's a skill that you have to get, but still. Pretty damn good. All right, I think we can take him out straight, so let's try that. There we go. He's down. Very nice. But I think the the best thing about the game is not, in fact, the addition of a new class. It's the fact that there's just so much more variety in your general playthrough. Yeah, So much more. Because there's a lot more missions and a lot more maps. You remember how every single alien landing was basically on the same few maps and they were all really dull? It's like, take cover behind trees and rocks. That's it. That's like all it ever was. They have massively changed that. And it is certainly, certainly something that improves the game greatly. The maps are a lot better. There's some really nicely done alien landing and crash landing maps. Like there's one on a farm, which is fantastic fun. And there's also one in a city, which is really, really cool. And the addition of Meld, which I haven't actually talked about yet, really does change the pace of the game a little bit. Meld is a useful resource, a very, very useful and important resource, because without Meld, you can't really do any of this gene mod stuff and you can't maintain your mech troopers. So as a direct result, you want to be going after Meld, but Meld is a bit of a timed resource. So on the battlefield, it will disappear after a while if you don't grab it. It will self-destruct, so you have to get to it. Now, some of the Meld is pretty difficult to get to, and it forces you to move faster than you otherwise would, which results in a faster-paced game in general. And... I don't know whether or not it's just the kind of power creep which has allowed this to happen, but I haven't found that that has compromised my ability to play tactically. Yeah, I'm moving at a decent pace, and I'm not taking stupid risks, and I'm not losing any of my troops. And that maybe is a little bit of a surprise. I don't know if they have changed the difficulty. Maybe I just got better at XCOM. I mean, I did play 85 hours of the original. I'm not awful at the game, but I'm finding that really I can take more risks in this version and not be punished for it. It seems to me maybe that they, they could have reduced the difficulty slightly on Classic and maybe they've just left Impossible the way it is or maybe they've even increased Impossible. That's a possibility. It may also be that they're relying on the second wave options to make the game more difficult in that respect. Also very much a possibility. It's definitely a better game though. I love the fact that there are so many different missions. Adding the Exalt missions in really spices things up and changes the pace quite nicely. And there's also a lot of story-based missions in here now. Way, way more because they're all tied into Progeny and the Exalt stuff. So that means you will be going on more interesting missions from time to time. 
unfortunately, a lot of those missions do still end up being the kind of standard escort the VIP and things like that. It's less of the generic council missions and more of the, hey, this is a story-driven council mission that is actually here for a very good reason and it advances the plot in some way. Which is much, much better. I still hate the VIP missions with a fiery passion, but it's an escort mission. What do you expect? I mean, that's, that's not the kind of thing that a lot of people really enjoy. It would have certain, certainly been nice to see a greater variety of objectives, but I do appreciate the fact that you are not just doing abduction mission, terror mission, alien landing mission. You, know, you do have a little bit more in between, and honestly, you seem a lot busier. And I think maybe that's got something to do with the way that they actually balance the mech trooper. Because there is one thing that I haven't mentioned about the mech trooper, and that's the fact that it has a tendency to take a lot of bullets. Which means that your mech troopers will be frequently out of action because they get injured. It doesn't cost you Mel to fix them, which I actually think should be maybe a balancing part of it. I think maybe that would actually balance the mech trooper quite nicely if you had to spend meld in order to repair a wound, for instance. That would definitely make you prioritize your flesh and blood troopers a lot more. But... These guys do take a lot of damage because they tend to be at the forefront and they can't take cover, so they're going to take more hits. What does that mean? Well, as you might imagine, it means that they're going to be in hospital more, so you don't have them available all the time. It depends how well you play, really. But yeah, I, I don't think they've perhaps done enough to properly balance everything. Ooh, looks like we're going to get the final ability. What is the final ability? Absorption fields? Wow, any hit that does more than 33% of the mech's maximum health is reduced to that damage. That's pretty impressive. And reactive targeting sensors get a free shot back at the first enemy who attacks the mech. It, that's absurdly good! Wow! It's an overwatch without having to overwatch. That's assuming you've got the ammo for it. That's actually a little bit of a problem with mechs as well. I, t I keep saying, oh yeah, yeah, here's the mechs are really, really good, but... Here's a bunch of stuff that they're not good at. Well, they're not good at conserving ammo. They burn through ammo pretty quickly. There is expanded storage, which is 50% extra ammunition. But reactive targeting sensor seems absurd. I'm going to take absorption fields on her because she tends to take a lot of hits. And then on Zhang, I'm going to take reactive targeting sensors because he has the additional ammo. So that's just really, really good. Scary really good. Ah, Rocketeer and Mayhem. Very, very nice. That's impressive. Confers additional damage based on weapon tech level to suppression and all area of effect abilities. That, that actually seems crazy. All of these seem crazy. <laughs> there we go. There's definitely been a few changes for, on a few different abilities here as well. That's nice. Low profile. Big buff there. Alright, so that's the result of an Exalt Cell mission, as you can see. Reduced panic, and you also happen to have the extra credit bonus there as well and you get back your operative and it also reduces panic which is quite nice this is something that really wasn't available in the previous version of the game if you have a panic situation you can actually actively look for exalt cells and then attack them to reduce panic instead of having to wait yeah that's the biggest deal in my opinion because in the original XCOM you kind of just had to wait for things to happen and you felt a little bit helpless you can be proactive in uh, XCOM Enemy Within through the Covert Ops system. So if I have problems in South Africa and Nigeria, I can maybe find a cell there, and I can eliminate the cell to reduce the panic level and things like that, which is pretty cool. All right, Alien Nav Computer, very nice. Let's assign new research here. I think what I might do, actually, is do an autopsy. Let's autopsy the Seeker, because I have no idea what this is going to do, and then maybe we autopsy a sectoid or something like that and show you what kind of benefits you would get. There we go. Satellites are about to be operational. And my satellites are also ready as well, which is fantastic. So we'll throw out a couple of those. Launch the satellites. We will send them to South Africa and Nigeria because, well, as you can see, it's going down. Yeah, that's problematic, but it is what it is. Let's finish the secret autopsy. What do we get from that? Respirator implant, ghost grenade, and mimetic skin. So, bunch of new stuff. That would appear to... Oh, I see. Okay. That's cool. Ghost grenade. What on earth is that? Hmm. Interesting. And then mimetic skin. Change skin pattern to match cover. When the soldier moves to high cover, enemies without special capabilities will not target the soldier. Wow. That's, that's pretty powerful. What can I say? That is pretty powerful. 
So, as you can see, autopsy's way more important this time around. Incredibly important. Very, very nice. Alright, well that's that. I think the last thing I want to do is maybe see if I can find a Mectoid or a Seeker for us to fight, and then I can show you that, and then I can kind of come to a conclusion on it. Make no mistake, by the way, I spent a lot of time kind of criticizing the power creep. That does not mean this is not a worthwhile expansion. It is the exact opposite of that. It has a lot to it, and it's really revitalized my interest in XCOM. It does not address some of the concerns that some of the more classic XCOM players from the original series of games have, like the fact that there's no base invasion, like the fact that you can only attack one target at a time, you can only have one Sky Ranger. That stuff is very much still there. That's a bit of a problem. They certainly haven't really enhanced the inventory system. Admittedly, they let you have more items. The cover system's still the same. The movement system's still the same. It's time to face facts, I think, in that respect. They're not going to change that. They believe that's the right way to go. But that doesn't mean that this is not a stack of really cool, enjoyable content that has very much spiced the game up for me. It's not a massive game changer. There's no huge paradigm shifts, I feel, in it. But it is a lot of new stuff, a lot of very well-designed maps and missions that really get you interested in doing another playthrough. And then what I'm really intrigued by is the new second wave options, which, of course, I haven't seen yet. So what do I get from Sectoids? Uplink targeting aim. Okay, so, yep, Sectoids still useless. <laughs> I hate those little things. I mean, hell, I've got a fusion, fusion lance now that I can build, so that... That really isn't too big a deal. Reaper rounds is a new thing, by the way. It decreases your accuracy, increases your damage. Pretty useful for taking down big guys. I think we'll... We will build a fusion lance. There we go. And then we can equip that to take down a big ship or something like that. Let's do that. I should pick a new research. Because I want to keep playing after I'm done with this, by the way. Make no mistake. I have absolutely the intention of doing that. And we'll grab precision lasers here. Funnily enough, I still haven't even done the arc throw a bit, but there you go. Council report coming in. Lost Nigeria. That was to be expected. It was on five panic. I couldn't really deal with that. Actually down by three, which is not that ideal, but my satellite coverage should be really good. All right. I am looking for an abduction or something like that so that I can actually show you what's going on with that. Exalt. Oh, another exalt operation. Okay. I'm not going to take that on simply because I want to show you... There we go. There's a mission in the Situation Room. Okay, basic target escort. Alright, we can do that. So let's do that. Alright, want to take obviously my best troops this time around because, well, I'd prefer not to die and embarrass myself. So there we go. Yep, I think that's all we need. I think... Actually, I'll toss away one of my heavies, and I'll bring along one of my Healy dudes. Where is he? Where's my best support? There we go, Sydney Young. And I'm actually going to get rid of Major Diaz, and I'm going to replace her with... Because it is XCOM, my Guile hair dude. There we go. That's what I like to see. Make items available, and give him a scope as well. Man, it's, it's the biggest buff to the scope ever, because I know a lot of people didn't used to use the scope, because it wasn't really ideal to take that instead of a grenade or things like that, but now you can take that. You can put a scope on almost anybody, and you can still keep the grenades, which is very useful for leveling up lower level troops and things like that. Alright, let's see if we can find you a Mectoid or a Seeker. We might not be able to. We might not. Now, what I would like to emphasize, even though I've been saying that the mech troopers are very, very tough, Really, that's only true versus Exalt. They can still be taken out. They can still be crit in a big way. And actually, versus something like, say, the the Thin Men, they can take some massive, nasty critical hits. So you do have to watch out a little bit there. I have a feeling, as I said, that they will maybe scale off once you get further down the line. You go up against Berserkers and you go up against the stuff like Heavy Floaters. And then they'll become a little bit less ridiculous. But, yeah, such is the way of things. 
so unfortunately, since this is your target escort mission, there are no mechtoids here whatsoever, no Seekers, which is a little unusual. I think Seekers would have worked pretty well in this kind of mission environment, but they don't seem to have any of these missions spawn any of them. I mean, this mission was basically entirely Thin Men, so that's unfortunate. So I skipped through that mission and I got you another one, and this one has a couple of Seekers on it. Don't know if it's got a Mechtoid. I've only run into Mechtoids maybe three times in total. Those guys are not messing around. They're pretty damn powerful. Easily the most dangerous thing that they've put into this expansion unless they've hidden something else later down the line. But these two in the back there, they're Seekers. And I will show you exactly what they do. In the meantime, though, we'll pick off a couple of floaters. I'm sorry, this sniper is very, very good at his job. 100% chance to hit half a mile away. This is going to go splat. And off with his head. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. My guy's pretty well trained. Funnily enough, Tariq's just been sitting there taking bullets and not caring. It's like, yep, that's what I'm here for. I am here to take fire and be a general pain in the ass. Now, if I push forward, I should be able to trigger the Seekers, and then you can see exactly what they do. So, Seekers are assassination aliens. They look like squids, and as soon as you detect them, they instantly go into stealth unless you're able to shoot them with Overwatch. And they will be invisible until they attack you. And once they attack you, they're going to grab onto you. They're basically like a smoker in Left 4 Dead, and they will strangle your soldier unless you shoot them off the soldier. Sounds very dangerous. It's designed mostly as an anti-sniper alien. So a sniper will come out, maybe a sniper's in an elevated position somewhere with squad sight, and then immediately you are able to grab that sniper and strangle them to death as long as they don't have anyone nearby to help them out. Now this, of course, is going to have some very nice applications in multiplayer. I feel in single player, though, they're not really all that powerful. I've never had someone die to them. It's a little annoying because I believe you get like a turn disable at that point, which is irritating. But honestly, they don't seem that dangerous. You'd have to really go out of your way to split your troopers up, which is rarely, if ever, necessary for those aliens to really be any threat whatsoever. But you get to see them in action. They'll probably come after one of my troops pretty quickly. And usually what you want to do if you know the Seekers around is to use Overwatch liberally. And you can perhaps kill the Seeker before they're actually able to attach onto anything. Zhang's going to rock his face, as he always does. This guy, what can I say? He is a fantastic shot when it comes to dealing with these idiots. All right. Please don't tell me you're bugged out. I assume the alien activity means that the Seekers are moving. Yeah, must be. So, thankfully, it didn't bug out, so that's always nice. I'm gonna... I think I'm actually just gonna leave him here. He's doing a, a pretty good job. You might think, oh, what about the Seekers? Well, so far, what I've seen of the Seeker, Seeker AI does not give me the indication that they're as smart as you would have hoped. They will not flank the entire battlefield to find someone right at the back, and I think they need to. Uh, if they were in control of, say, the player, that would probably happen. So in uh, multiplayer, that's probably going to be a big deal. But I've never seen them do that in the single player. It might happen this time. Who knows? Now, I also brought a couple of extra items along with me. Ghost grenades as well as the flashbangs and reaper rounds because I thought you guys might want to actually see them. Reaper rounds, by the way, have an effect, a visual effect that makes the bullets look a little bit different, gives them a different sound as well, which is kind of cool. I am splitting up deliberately here to allow the seekers to latch onto something so that I can show you exactly what's going on. I don't think you necessarily need to see the mechtoid. I mean, there's been so much footage put out of the mechtoid already as a result of all of this convention stuff, so it's not really something you need to worry about. But let's just say they're dangerous. For those of you who don't know, there's a seeker. It's probably not even going to get to latch onto anything because Zhang's probably going to pop him just like he does with everything else. Oh. There's the Reaper rounds going off as well. Yep, Seeker goes down. There is a second one somewhere, so... In fact, I'm actually not even going to use Overwatch. I'm probably just going to let the Seeker attach onto something because I want you guys to see what it does. So, I'm not sure if that's even possible. I guess I just have to kind of run around like an idiot for a while. There isn't just an end turn button, is there? Oh yeah, there is. Backspade. Of course, you'd never use that button, but... Let's see if that other Seeker decides to... Come on. Come on, little Seeker. I want to show the nice men what this does. There we go. There's the Seeker. All right. So what it does is it grabs onto something, attempts to strangle them. It will kill them pretty fast unless you shoot it off of them, which is actually not that difficult. He says, and then he's probably going to horribly miss it. 
66% chance. Now, if you had a chance of hitting your friend, that might be a big deal, but I've never seen that happen. I assume it can't happen. So I think that guy's disabled for a turn because he's catching his breath, but that's really about it. So there you go. All right, conclusion. Since we've been going on for long enough, I think. It's a really good expansion, and it adds an awful lot to the game. If you are hoping for some of the classic XCOM features to kind of come back, like base invasions, like multiple Sky Rangers and bigger teams and things like that, no. Game doesn't do any of that. But it is unquestionably a better game than it was. It's got a lot more to it. They've tried to address some of the concerns in more subtle ways, and they've also improved things like the skills and the foundry upgrades to offer you a bigger sense of choice. There are loads more items, but you can also carry a couple of extras as well, so you will not have everyone running around with the same gear. And that's really quite nice. The gene mods are a fantastic addition. I'm not so keen on the mech trooper. I mean, as I said, it's fun to have a new class, but I still feel a little bit powerful right now. But the gene mods are universally great. I love the extra layer of customization that it actually gives you, and that's absolutely fantastic. It's definitely a good enough reason to do another playthrough, and of course with the additional second wave options, I have a feeling that people will continue to play XCOM an awful lot in the future. I love the new maps. I have not found a single new map that I have hated. I like them all. I, in fact, think they're pretty much all better than the original maps, which is great. It's going to, of course, make multiplayer a lot more exciting because there's more multiplayer maps available as well. So they've, they've done a really good job. Hey, a mechtoid! Sweet! There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Fate said, hey, we're going to give you a mechtoid. And then I shot them to pieces. <laughs> Down goes the- that's unfortunate. I killed the sectoid, which we're gonna buff it. Alright, I guess we get to fight a mechtoid before we end this as well. That- that works perfectly well. God, you are a good shot. Holy crap. <laughs> Alright, mechtoids are really, really dangerous. Very dangerous. Reasonably early game enemies. You- you see them fairly early on. You don't get them as soon as you get the mech suits, which I think is unfortunate, because if you did, then I feel that things would be a little bit crazier. But what I will say, as you could probably notice here, the mechtoid, when he spawns, actually goes straight into Overwatch. And he does a decent amount of damage. And the mechtoid can also shoot twice on a turn if he stands still. He is not to be messed with. If a sectoid is around with him, he can buff him with a shield, which makes him very, very difficult to damage. Incredibly difficult. So I'll open up with everything I've got, but hey, I might even lose a trooper. Come on, you can do better than that. So yeah, it's really nice to have that kind of mini boss, I suppose, coming at you fairly early on in the game, and it pops them out every once in a while, and it also makes sectoids more relevant later on in the game as well, which is nice, because let's be honest, sec sectoids were a complete waste of space later on until the sectoid commanders come out, but with sectoids around, these guys are even more lethal, because they can take so much more damage. All right, time to use a ghost grenade. There we go. So we've got a few problems with this guy about to gun down our trooper here. What if we made him invisible with a ghost grenade? Here we go. So, I hope this works the way that I hope it does. There we go. So, I've just made my mech trooper invisible. So, that's going to cause a few problems for him, I feel. And I also have a flashbang, which I'm going to test on this guy as well, I think. So, he might still horribly murder me. That's definitely a possibility, but we'll keep an eye out and see what happens. Yeah, he, he's definitely the coolest new enemy. Uh, the Seekers are a nice concept, but I just, I don't feel they're dangerous enough. The Mechtoids, on the other hand, are lethal. Like, it can take an entire squad to bring one of these damn things down. Very damage resistant. If there's a Sectoid buffing it, it's nigh on impossible to kill. And it can just chew through anything. One-shotting soldiers, and just like two-shotting your Mech Troopers as well. Which is pretty damn impressive. So I'm pretty glad that they added that. That's really nice. Also, I like the fact that it goes on Overwatch as well, because obviously it can't take cover, so there's no point in, upon discovery, it doing that. Oh, look at the amount of damage that thing can do. It is an absolute beast. And unfortunately, I forgot to reload. There we go. That could be a little bit of a problem. Also, the immune to fire. So if you thought, hey, I'm just going to unload with a flamethrower. Nope. No, you're not. <laughs> That's not going to help you at all. Absolutely not. 100% chance to hit to the face. There we go. It's a cool model as well. It's a damn cool model. Alright, yeah. So, I gave you my conclusion, and frankly, I think it's a really great expansion, and I don't see any big reasons whatsoever to not consider picking it up if you happen to already like XCOM. It adds a lot more to the game, it gives it a lot more replayability, it fills it out in places. 
it doesn't have any huge paradigm shifts, which I think is maybe the only big disappointment that I've got with it. It would have been nice to see just a, a massive set of new mechanics. Exalt really, I don't think counts. If I'm entirely frank. Oh man, I've run out of ammo. I think I'm going to lose a trooper here. Exalt doesn't really count, even though there are certainly new mechanics kind of being put into place with it. Simply because it's just fighting humans at the end of the day. And the sort of meta aspect to it is very limited, to say the least. But it's a good expansion. Really good expansion. Lots of new stuff to play with. It's a big old toy box for XCOM. And it makes it a better game. So there you go, folks. We'll be available in a couple of weeks' time. In the middle of November for $30 or your regional equivalent. My name has been Total Biscuit, taking a very lengthy look at XCOM Enemy Within. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.